What does a Hollywood film, a podcast, a billboard, and a PDF have in common? They were all made with Adobe products. Across the globe, millions of creative professionals rely on Adobe software to produce their creative work. Adobe's dominance of the creative software market has made it one of America's most valuable tech companies. In 2021, Adobe reported a record $15.79 billion in revenue. If you're a creative professional, most likely you've heard of Adobe. So, how has a 40-year-old company managed to remain so dominant in the creative software space? This is the economics of Adobe. Adobe was founded in 1982 by two former Xerox employees, John Warnock and Charles Geschke. Today, Adobe offers a suite of products that include Adobe Illustrator, Reader, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, InDesign, and dozens of others. But when it began, Adobe only offered one product, PostScript, a programming language designed to print documents on laser printers. In the early 1980s, most printing was done on dot matrix printers, which used printed dots to form shapes that, while legible, were blocky and imprecise. When PostScript was released in 1984, it helped jumpstart a revolution in desktop publishing by allowing users to produce their own professional-looking content. But Adobe's business hasn't just relied on developing breakthrough products in-house. To remain competitive over the years, Adobe made dozens of acquisitions and investments. I think they look a lot like a lot of big tech companies. They look to acquisitions to helping them get into a new product area. In 1984, the company merged with competitor Aldus. Aldus's publishing program PageMaker and animation software After Effects were integrated into Adobe's product line, eventually becoming Adobe InDesign and Adobe After Effects. In 1995, Adobe acquired Photoshop, a program so popular that it's become a verb. Today, the photo editing program is used by over 90% of the world's creative professionals, according to Adobe. Later, in 2005, Adobe acquired another competitor, Macromedia, which sold a web development tool called Dreamweaver and a video player platform called Flash. Both programs were absorbed into Adobe's suite of products. All of this you can do together in real time without stepping on each other's toes. Most recently, Adobe purchased the design platform Figma for $20 billion, the biggest acquisition Adobe has ever made. So the main thing that stood out to me about the Figma acquisition was the figure of 20 billion for the company. That was 50X the revenue of Figma and it really just goes to show you how much Adobe wanted that company. Adobe's story is also one of adaption. In 2011, Adobe began its much-publicized transition from a provider of one-time purchase products to a software-as-a-service or SaaS model. Cloud and subscription, also called software-as-a-service or SaaS, has completely taken over how people buy and consume software. You don't buy software, but you rent it with a monthly subscription plan. The big idea behind Adobe's move to the cloud was that instead of paying hundreds or thousands of dollars up front for a single product, customers would be able to buy a monthly subscription at a far lower price. How has it been going, this transition from, from, from package software to subscriptions? A few years ago, Scott, we just decided that we had a unique opportunity to reinvent creative. And uh, what we wanted to do was provide access to the entire suite of Adobe software at a really affordable price to a much broader set of customers. At the time, this switch was considered financially risky, since most of Adobe's revenue came from physical products. I think the biggest concern at that time, you have a community of users that are used to buying software in a certain way, and suddenly they're expected to pay a monthly fee for just getting access to the software. In 2013, a Change.org petition to not end Creative Suite 7 and force users onto Creative Cloud received almost 50,000 signatures. But a decade on, it's clear Adobe's gamble paid off. Since it went all in on the cloud in 2013, Creative Cloud subscriptions have made up the bulk of Adobe's earnings. In 2021, Adobe's subscribers accounted for 90% of the company's revenue. And despite a recent downturn, today Adobe stock trades at almost eight times what it was in 2013. Adobe switched to the cloud worked out phenomenally for them. They went from four to 
$8.2 billion in annual sales back in 2011 to that being their revenue they're bringing in for the quarter. Now, instead of just getting a one-time acquisition cost from a customer, customers be paying every month for years.